We've been busy here at E3 2016, trying to fill as many orders as we can in Overcooked. It's quite a stress stressful game that I'm sure does sort of justice to what it's like to work in an actual professional kitchen, because I understand that's quite a, a stressful occupation as well. But tell us, what, 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 what's the vision for Overcooked? Uh, Right, well, we, we wanted to make a, a cooperative game and we wanted to make one that was like what we consider a true cooperative game. So one where every single person has an integral role, right? So the orders come in and then it's up to you as a team to decide how you're going to distribute the different jobs you have. So one person, you're going to be like, right, you do the chopping. I'm going to go and man the stove. You do the washing up. And, and that was basically the core experience we were going for this this cooperative game that required teamwork requires a lot of communication and and hopefully a lot of fun as well i mean i, I would almost say like communication is like the main mechanic here like absolutely. without that everything falls apart absolutely that was that was definitely what we what we wanted we wanted a game where everyone's gathered around the tv and they're all screaming at each other and pointing and and we do find that, that the people who communicate best are actually the people who are the the best at the game so you don't necessarily need to be like a hardcore gamer you don't need to be amazing at, at like fps or anything like that you know what i mean it's more like do you and your friends communicate well do you have a good connection and i find that you know the people who are like closest friends get get on best at the game because they just sync up right is, is this thing where you're required to sort of both be focused on your specific task but also be aware of everything else that's going on because it that that's sort of like the, that simultaneous thing because if you don't have the overview you don't know where you might yeah. be needed next Absolutely, yeah. I think that it's it's kind of a, a juggling act, right? There's there's the the task that you're currently involved in, but also being aware of what everyone else is doing. So there's no point like you chopping an onion if everyone else in the kitchen is also doing the same thing. So you need to make sure that what you're doing is is synced up with the actions of everyone else. And I think that 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 leads to a lot of the the. The, the energy that you get from the game, right? Because everyone's just struggling to keep an eye on what everyone else is doing. It is a lot of fun, and 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 well, it it's also not ju it's it's not a simple game because there's quite a lot of different things that you need to sort of That's do. Right. A lot of actions, and yeah. and and I would say the actions outnumber the number of chefs. Definitely. For the most part, at least. Yeah, yeah. There's a definite aspect of of spinning plates. So. We, we, we have the, the core mechanics themselves are quite simple, so just taking an onion over to a chopping board and chopping it up, there's like two buttons involved. But the fact that there's, you know, five different tasks that you should be doing, and on top of that we then layer in all the ridiculous uh, sort of scenery things that you'll see in the trailer that's going on behind us. So, you know, you might be cooking on a boat and suddenly the whole thing slides to the side, or you're moving between trucks, or you're in outer space, so we have levels that are like on an ice flow, or a haunted house when things are floating around. Mm. Basically anything that we could think of as designers um, that would disrupt the team, <laughs> you know? So just when they're getting it together, anything we can do to sort of separate them and force them again to have to communicate, then that, that's what we went for. So what's the philosophy with that? Is that in any way sort of randomized or procedural or is it going to be the same every time you, you play a certain level so that you can perfect it by memorizing, say, the pattern of the movement yeah. and stuff? So you, you can definitely uh, memorize the movement of the objects. What you can't predict is what order the recipes are oh, going to yeah. come in. So yeah. that's completely randomized. So sometimes you might get a burger that comes in. Other times you might get uh, know, fish and chips or something. It's You, you don't know what you're going to be cooking at any, any given moment on a level. So that keeps things like interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, and at least then you, don't, you only have to sort of, once you've memorized that, you only have to react to one thing exactly. instead of two things, which yeah. was quite a challenge here. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think there's a nice aspect to it where like, like the first time you play it, it feels like completely random, and then the second time you go into it, you start to realize the pattern, and, and you get yourselves more organized. I think there's there's a nice aspect of, of learning and uh, improving for experience, which which seems really rewarding for players. So I think that the, the base, the most basic dish that we got was onion soup. Yeah. Uh, what what was how how far does it scale up in terms of comple complexity, and and what kind of dishes are there like? We have all kinds of different dishes, so as you say, onion soup uh, is how we start and then we go to more complex soups, but then we also have burgers and we do pizzas and we do burritos and, and fish and chips. The, the main sort of philosophy behind the, the food that we chose was ones that people sort of had a, 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 a prior knowledge 
an experience of how to make them, mm. but also meals that required lots of different tasks to put them together. So for like the pizza, you know, you have to roll out the dough, someone else grates the cheese, someone gets the tomatoes. It's so all these different things, but they're sort of familiar to most people. You know, most people know how a burger is made or how a pizza is made. So that was kind of how we made the choice with food. I would imagine that most people are also familiar with having someone scream at you because your beef wellington isn't cooked correctly or something like that. <laughs> uh, are you sort of bringing in that, those sort of things as well? Because there are a lot of tropes with like chefs and, and things like that. Yeah, I think people naturally gravitate towards those roles. It just happens naturally. I mean, you can get like some really nice, quiet, unassuming people. You put them in front of this game with their friends and suddenly they're shouting at each other and they're saying, I, I, I swear, someone will always become the head chef. Like they will always be like, I'm going to tell everyone what they're going to do. You chop me an onion, I'm going to go over here. And I kind of like that. I like this from a psycho psychology point of view, just seeing how the group changes when you, when you are forced, uh, when you um, are faced with adversity in the game. I think that's, that's really cool. That's what I like to watch. <laughs> We, we played it in local multiplayer. Are there any plans for online? I mean, it's kind of a concept that perhaps is a di difficult to do online, or, or yeah. is that coming as well? No, we're, we're sticking to local only at the minute. That was the experience we wanted to get, was a lot of people around the screen playing. It will be kind of pointless with someone who, if you get online and it's someone who doesn't communicate, it's like, it's like exactly. it could be a bad experience. The game really does struggle with, with people who aren't good at communicating, and I think it, it needs to be played by friends and around a single screen. Um, and, and also it's nice to be able to push your friend when you're playing, you know what I mean? And or to point at something and, and, and yeah. shout. I think that's a big part of it. And it's, it's something that like, that was the kind of games I used to love in my childhood, you know, playing N64 games, something like that, where mm. it was me and my friends all gathered around a screen playing GoldenEye or something. I, I love that. I love that aspect of it. Half the experience is in the room or even more. Yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, it's just, that's my favorite way to play games. And that's what we wanted to kind of capture with this game. And, and what, what platforms are you coming out on and, and what's the timeline ahead? Okay, so we're going to be bringing out the game on Xbox One, PlayStation 4 and PC. It's going to be on Steam. Um, and we are like in the last few weeks and months of development now. So we're doing all the work required to port it to PS4 and, and Xbox. But don't have a, a, an official release date yet, but soon. Very soon. Thank you so much for your time. No, thank you very much. Thank you for playing.